Hello everyone. Today's video is going to be on creating a persistent multi-vector store with Postgres SQL and Langchain. Let's get started. The reason I decided to do this video is that I'm currently working on a RAG project for a customer and I realized that when I do similarity search on many documents, my results were not very good. So I started searching for a solution and I came across the multi-vector retriever. The multi-vector retriever allows us to store multiple vectors per document. The methods to create multiple vectors per document includes smaller chunks, summary, and hypothetical questions. In this video, we are going to cover all three of them. Most examples that I found on the internet implements the multi-vector retriever using the in-memory document store, which is fine when you're prototyping. But when you're doing a production-grade application, we need to have a way for our vectors to be persistent. Langchain has introduced in version 0.1.4 an SQL doc store that I decided not to use because I needed to have the ability to control the table name and also have the ability to add my own indexes. So for those reasons, I decided to create my own implementation using Postgres SQL. And this is the purpose of this video. Keep in mind that you can easily interchange my document store with the SQL doc store very easily. So if you want to create a retriever that combines smaller chunks, document summaries, and hypothetical questions, you're watching the right video. If you think this video is worth your while, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Let's get started. For those of you who would like to have a more detailed explanation, I've created an article on medium.com. Also, all the source code used in this demo will be published on my GitHub. Both URLs will be available in the video's description. If you're watching a video on creating multi-vector retriever, I'm going to assume that you have more than a basic knowledge of Python and Langchain. For those who need help on setting up their environment, you can read my article on medium.com where I've detailed everything step by step. To run this tutorial, you're going to need to have access to a Postgres server. The easiest way for me to give you access to a Postgres server was by using a Docker um, and an existing image. So I've created a Docker Compose file that uses a pre-existing image that already has installed PG Vector. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your Docker desktop is running. Right now, I don't have any images running. So if you head to my article, I've given you the command to uh, build the image. If you bear with me one second. Here, Docker Compose, and let's execute the command and you will see that I now have my server running. Okay. I'm also going to use uh, PG admin to uh, show you the uh, tables and the results. Right now you can see I have no tables. The database is empty. This tutorial is based on a Jupyter Notebook called Multi-Vector RAG. It contains all the necessary steps to create your multi-vector retriever. First thing we're going to do is load our environment variables. The variables are stored in a .env file. We have our OpenAI API key and all the information required to connect to the Postgres server. Since we're running a local version in a, in a Docker uh, container, I'm going to be using localhost and uh, my user port and password were predefined in my docker compose file. So if you need to change this information, here's where you would have to do this. The PDF that uh, I'm going to be using for the tutorial is called montreal.pdf. It's a two page document that has approximately 1600 characters separated in things to do in Montreal and dining in Montreal. 
I ask uh, ChatGPT to come up with this document so that we have a very small document uh, that we're going to create embeddings on. And since there's only two pages, and I'm going to uh, chunk them by pages, so it's going to be easy for us to know where the information is coming from. Okay, let's start by reading the PDF. So I'm using a standard library called PyPDFloader, and my document is in the data folder. So let's run this. And as you can see, I have uh, a list of documents, and I have two items in my list, one for each pages. If we scroll the results to the right, you'll see that each page contains a metadata tag, okay, which contains source and page. See, source and page. The next step is to instantiate the vector store and the retriever. In the next cell, if we ran this cell, we would be instantiating an in-memory store, which is not what we want to do. The purpose of this video is to instantiate a persistent store using the Postgres byte store. Okay. What we need to do is instantiate just a regular vector store. In this case, I'm using PG vector, but you could have used any uh, vector store available in LangChain. Then we need a doc store. And in this case, we're going to be using the Postgres byte store. Okay. After that, we need to define a key. I'm just going to call it doc ID. You can call it whatever you want. The reason we need a key is we need to have a way to link our parent chunk, which are the two uh, chunks that we created from our original uh, Montreal PDF, to all the other vectors that we're going to create to enhance the similarity search. So when I create the multi-vector retriever, I need to tell it which vector store I'm using and which doc store I'm using. And also, I need to supply the keys to do the link between, let's say, the child chunk and the parent chunk. If you remember when I showed you earlier the metadata, it did not contain the doc IDs. It only had the source and the page numbers. Now what we need to do is we need to create unique IDs for each pages, each of our parent chunk. To do this, I'm going to use UUID. UUID is a standard package to create unique IDs. You don't have to do this. You can use sequential integers. You can use your own IDs. It doesn't matter as long as it's unique. For me, I'm going to use UUID because it's a convenient way of creating my IDs. So let me run this. And you can see now I have my two unique IDs. One of the use cases of using the multi-vector retriever is to have smaller chunks. If you remember earlier when we loaded the Montreal.pdf file, we partitioned it by pages. Now, keep in mind that one page can contain a lot more than just one information. So it's not very efficient to have one vector per page. Okay, so one way to, ro to work around this is to have smaller chunks. By having smaller chunks, we can divide the page into smaller vectors that point to the original document. So in my example here, I'm going to create chunks of 400 characters, and then I'm going to assign these new chunks to the parent chunk using the doc IDs that we created earlier. So let me run this. And as you can see, my documents are much smaller. I have more than two. And if I look at the metadata, I can see that each chunk points to a page, like page zero, page zero, page zero. And the doc ID is the same for all page zero, see? Same doc ID, okay? That's very important because when I'm going to do a similarity search, I'm going to be searching the smaller chunks, but I want to be returning the parent chunks. So I need a way to link between the two. Now what we need to do is to save our smaller chunks into the vector store. And to do this, we're going to use the add document function 
and we're going to pass it our list of smaller chunks, which is all subdocs that we created earlier. And we're going to store the parent chunks into our doc store. So let's run this. Now we can use pgnmin and look at the embeddings table. And see, we have 12 embeddings. And if I go to the byte store and I say view, I should only have two. Two because those are my original documents. Okay. Now we can test the retriever. If we do a similarity search, this will uh, search the smaller chunks. Okay, so let's take a look. See, it found four. Now let's look at this uh, closely. I have things to do in Montreal, old Montreal, Montreal's and museum. So I have things to do in Montreal, and then we had old Montreal, museum of fine arts, museum and Montreal's underground. Montreal's underground. Now we've searched the smaller chunks. Now what if we want to return the original chunks? Then we would just use the invoke command. So by using the invoke, you see only one chunk is returned and it should be page zero. Here we go. Okay, page zero because all of these four were on, uh, oops, sorry, page zero. Page zero, page zero, okay? Another use case is to create summaries for each parent chunk. And to do this, we're going to create a chain where we're going to uh, submit to the LLM each uh, parent chunk so that it will return a summary of it, okay? And so we'll instantiate our chain. And then to run the chain, we're gonna use the batch command so that we can run uh, the chain in parallel. So let's run that, it'll take a few seconds. We only have two parents, remember, so it shouldn't be too long. And let's take a look, and here are our two summaries. Now what we need to do, we need to do the same thing that we did with the smaller chunks. We need to assign our summaries to the parent chunk with the doc IDs. So I have a little uh, utility uh, routine here that is very similar to what we did earlier. So let's run this. And now let's look at our summary doc. And now we should have uh, the metadata that we need. See, page zero, doc ID. Okay, page one, doc ID. Now we need to add them to the vector store and to the doc store, just like we did with the smaller chunks. So let's run this. And now let's take a look. If I refresh this in my pgnmin, now I have 14 vectors, okay? I have 12, I added an extra two, and but my byte store should still have two, okay? Because those are my original documents, okay? So it's working here as well. Okay, the last use case that we're gonna look at is generating hypothetical question for each parent chunk. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a new chain that's going to submit our parent chunks and have it generate a list of five questions separated by a comma. Okay, so let's instantiate my function and the model and let's invoke it in batch so that we can run in parallel. Should take a few seconds. Okay. Now let's take a look at our list. So for each page, we have, see page one, we have five question, page two, five question. Now we need to do what we did earlier with the smaller chunks, the summaries, we need to do the same thing with the questions. We need to assign each question to the parent chunk. So again, I have a little piece of code here that'll do that automatically. So here's my list of questions now. So now each question is assigned individually to the parent chunk, okay? So again, we need to add those chunks to the vector store and to the doc store, just like we did earlier. Okay, now let's look at pgnmin. 
Remember in the embeddings we had 14, now we have 24, okay? And in the byte store, we should still have two. Bingo, okay? Now we can test our retriever. Now this will query the vector store, okay? Meaning the uh, smaller chunks, the summaries, and the question. So let's give this a shot. So what dining options are available in Montreal? See, what are the some of the dining options available? That looks like a question. Huh? What is a popular dish to try in Montreal? Staples of Montreal food country. See, this, these two are questions, and these are just contents, either smaller chunks or maybe question. Okay. Now, if we invoke, it only returns the proper page. Now that we have finished uh, importing our data into our vector store, let's test out the retriever. Uh, I've created this rag pipeline, so let me instantiate the chain, and let's give it a shot with a few questions. The first question is, what dining options are available in Montreal for those interested in Middle Eastern cuisine? Let's run this, and there should only be one, and that's Damas. Okay, perfect. Now, the second one is using an example that was generated by the model. So obviously it should work. So let's give that a shot. Where can I find the best smoked meat in Montreal? Well, it says Schwartz Deli. Okay. Now, what if I change smoked meat by food? Food being larger in sense that it should return more. Let's give it a shot. And it says the document mentions several places in Montreal known for their food, including Schwartz Deli for smoked meat sandwiches, La Banquise, Toque, Joe Beef, and so on. So as you can see, we have um, improved the uh, results from our similarity search. So using the multi-vector retriever, for me, turns out that the results are much better than just having one vector per page. Now, the whole point of this video was to uh, demonstrate that you could create a multi-vector uh, retriever without having to redo it every time, like most examples on the internet are showing us. So now I've created a new notebook called Multi-Vector RAG2, and here I'm just gonna load my variables because I need my API key. I'm, I'm going to instantiate my uh, vector store and my retriever. And all I have to do now is instantiate my rag chain or my rag pipeline and ask my question. And if everything went well, it should work. Here we go. So we, I have successfully demonstrated that we can now create persistent multi-vector retriever. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe.